everyone, Tom Trossett here, and today we're going to be doing a different video. Earlier in the year, I made this as a, as a talking point, and today we're going to discuss it. Humans versus zombies. And about a month from now, I'll be going to an event called Enmore in North Carolina. But before we get to that part, let's talk about humans versus zombies. If you've been around on this channel, you have seen it in short form or on my TikTok, where I do little videos of events that I've gone to in the past or skits of those kind of games. I was doing that as a way to alleviate the frustration of me not able to do these games because of the pandemic. Pandemic's over. So things have returned to normal with these kind of activities. But Humans vs. Zombies is a modern day lurk game that usually happens on college campuses or possibly outside venues or some other manner, like maybe uh, recreation park park areas. But for the most part, they're college campuses. And a reason why I say it's a modern day LARP because you could dress up and actually be a zombie or be a tactically cool human player within reason. So, as a human player, you'll have an armband, which is, you know, designated on either arm, doesn't matter. A less maybe specified by the college, but for the most part, as long as it's a light green band, bandana of some kind or armband that's on your arm that people can see. You also will have throwing socks. It's a ball-up sock they use to throw at zombies. Now, in the past, it's been nerf blasters. It always has been nerf blasters, but because of how long this thing has been around, you now have third-party or homemade or 3D printed blasters so it's it goes beyond the typical nerf blaster in context so those are the things you would use as a human you, you you know shoot darts and you throw socks to protect yourself because zombies will tag you and that's how you become a zombie now if you're a zombie player you have a headband that's color coded usually it's orange it could be a different color depending on the circumstance and you basically run around you you tag people with one firm hand or two firm or something like that on, you know, upper body part. Not anything inappropriate, essentially. You don't tackle them either. There's no aggressive tag tagging, so don't do that. But it's essentially just you're, 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 you're tagging the person. But there's also more to just being a zombie. There's also something called original zombie, which could be hidden or they could be at the start of the game. And they're usually identified right away, unless they're hidden. And they pretty much don't act like normal zombies. If they're hidden, they may look like a human player, and will try to go out of the way to tag human players unsuspectingly. But, you know, appropriate tag still. So, having OZs is always fun. And just regular zombies is always fun. And there's also special zombies. So, depending on the college and where you go to, the special zombies always differ. Edmore is no exception. They have their own special zombies. And I'll get into that very soon. But for blank, blank general consensus, you have a tank zombie. You have some sort of spitter, smoker, some obscure zombie that has like a physical object they could throw. They don't want to touch because it could turn you into a zombie. Or if you get hit with it, or whatever the case may be. There's also been witches, there's been basically any technical term name that you've heard from like Left 4 Dead, like there's also been boomers, stuff like that. Uh, some things have also adapted from other genres, like The Last of Us with the clicker. So that was something that was brought into a game that I've actually experienced. Um, but I've not really experienced any other particular special zombies unless identified. So... That's the general context, and then how to play the game. So, with everything I just discussed, there's spawn times, well, respawn times, I should say. There's uh, things you may have to do with, in terms of being stunned. You may have to go uh, distance away. You may have to hide in order to respawn. 
if we're talking about N-more in context, there's things called on the twos, on the fours, on the fives, or whatever the case be. B, instead of it being like a long duration time frame, let's say, hey, you got tagged at 401, but it's on the fives, so you can't come back in until 405. Or let's say, you know, I got tagged at 403. You still can't come back in until 405 because it's on the fives. But that's N-more context. If we're talking about a general game... Most respawn times are generally favorable. If they're big big games, it could be a minute, two minute respawn times. If it's a smaller game, expect it to be seconds. So, you know, 15, 30 seconds, maybe 45. It really depends on the game of the theme, the context of the missions, like what are you doing for missions... No, the, no, the whole nine yards, basically, of what is humans versus zombies. And then the duration. Now, typically at colleges, they'll do invitations and week-longs. Week-longs are not open to the public. It's usually just who goes to the college and is part of the club that do these week-long games. So no outsiders that don't go to the college don't really play week-long games. Invitations, on the other hand, are one-day games, usually on Saturdays, and everyone is able to join. So if you go, you know, I go to College A, but College B is having invitation. Cool, I go to the College B invitation on Saturday, even though I don't go to the college. So that's that's generally what it is. It's usually open invitation, unless specified. And then there's some other weird ones. Like, there's been, like, four-day games day games there's also been two day games or two day invitations although those are rare but it depends on the event and how big it is overall so i think i covered the general basis for humans versus zombies if i miss anything let me know in the comments but i've been playing humans versus zombies since 2013 i have footage of me playing years and years ago i'm gonna be leaning into what i post because this is stuff that I made a while ago. Things have, you know, changed in terms of... I could go and ask the person if they're okay with it, but it's... When you have a lot of people in a lot of these games and you're filming, the general consensus is fine at the time, but then, you know, after time has gone by, whether it's loud or not, I don't know. So, I will have some footage that I can use just to give you an idea of what's been going on throughout the video. Let's talk about End War. End War is an entirely different beast to a normal college humans versus zombies. There was something called Nation versus Zombies, but I don't know all the details about it. It was years ago when it, it did happen, but End War became the replacement, I think, overall. I could be wrong. I, I know it's spun and tried to do its own thing elsewhere, but as far as I know, End War is now the considerable nation hvz so and more used to move around to different college campuses throughout the u.s host this big event we're talking 500 to a thousand player hvz a normal hvz game could be between 100 and 200 people depending on the college and the size of interest from the club of that college and then also anyone who joins as an outsider if it's an invitation so you figure it's got to be at least two times three times five times the size of a normal game so a lot more moderation a lot more planning has to go go into it a lot a lot more technical details are needed for a big game like this to wor even work and there has been success with this game in the past I've been to the 2017, the 2018, and the 2019 and War Games. All fun, all fantastic. Loved it every time. Especially because when this first was happening, there was a lot more you could do. My very first game, which I didn't think was happening, was in Ohio. And you could be a human, you could be a zombie in the town we were at so it was even off the campus the game was still going so that was it threw me off and it was also a two-day invitation game so 
that game I hold a special place in my heart because of how f much fun that one was. And in 2018, it did in Ohio again, which was fine. I love the location we were at, and I think everything pretty much played the same way as it did in 2017. 2019, we moved to Georgia. Now, I don't remember the Georgia... I don't remember any of the town names off the top of my head. I just know the states we were at. So Georgia, I know we went to in 2019, and that was also fun, too. It changed a little bit because it went from outside of college being in play to, I think, just the college campus. So it did scale down a little bit, but the college they picked at Georgia was still huge and almost like a maze of some kind in some locations of the college. So it still brought interest. It was still a lot of fun to play. Then the pandemic happened. Yeah, that sucked. So there was no humans versus zombies for a couple years. It wasn't until 2022 when End War finally came back. Now, if you see my TikTok or my YouTube shorts, End War 2022 was not the best game. There was definitely a lot of miscommunication and handling of the game itself. I don't want to go too negative about it, but it, it it did leave a sour taste in my mouth overall for the game. Then I missed 2023, which went from RIT in New York to then North Carolina. And now in 2024, it's going to be North Carolina again. So, N-Word used to move around. And I say used to because now North Carolina, wherever it's, it is in North Carolina, is going to stay there all the time. As for timing, it seems like July is going to be a sticking point. So, I think it's it's safe to say Enmore's not going to move anymore. And time-wise, it should happen every time in July. That's just a general assumption. Everything I'm speculating or assuming is what's going to stay as it is and not change in the future. But, I'm hoping for 2024 to be good. 2023 was the turnaround from 2022 in terms of management and how the game was run. I was happy about it. Now to talk about 2024's end war. Um, it hasn't happened yet because it's, it's going to happen a month from now. And I did look ahead to the rule set. I do have some concerns of two May specials being in play. Or possibly in play. Who knows. And. There's one mechanic I don't like. Although it doesn't happen in open areas. So. Let me break it down to you. I'm going to have to use my phone. For this. Alright. I have my phone here. Welcome to Humans for Zombies at Enmore 2024. Our goal as the moderating team is to create a welcoming, fun, and safe environment for all players. This handbook was created to ensure that you are familiar with the general rules of Humans vs. Zombies. The rules unique to this event as well as player conduct expectations. Most answers to your questions can be found here, but if you still have questions, please ask our friendly moderators and they'll be able to give you the answers you need. They could be identified by the awesome shirts, purple bandanas, or mod team role in Discord. We hope you have a great time and more. And please don't make us, please don't make uh, us make a rule about it. Which, you know, you don't really want to challenge a game. You'd rather just play within the context of the rules because rule zero is don't be a dick or just don't be rude. Let's just go with that. Um. There is a strike system in play, so if you, you know, go out of bounds or do something you're not supposed to, there is a strike system which could get you out of the game. And obviously, moderated discretion. Not everything's going to be covered or potentially handled in the in this handbook. So you know, there'll be discussion and how that can get resolved. And there's player conduct. I do know the college. So it's North Carolina at UNCC. So that's where Edmore is going to take place. They do have a dress code. Which I should explain a bit more. But there is a dress code that's going to be on this handbook. There's also registration. Let's go over the rules, shall we? 
we talked about tags and how what to do when tagged. We talked about stuns. So throwing socks, ammo types, darts essentially. Or any of special mission mechanics. Respawn times for zombies. Respawn within the minute of the current rolling respawn. So that's what they're called. So the twos and the fives and the fours or whatever. Those are called rolling respawns. There are safe zones, which can happen on a typical game. No play zones, that's also common. Stairs have always been a 50-50. You shouldn't be playing on them. Let's just go with that. I don't want to say 50-50, but you should mind the stairs. They also provide a map. Your ammo type that's banned. Banned blaster types. And thrown projectiles. It should still be just balled up socks. Although sometimes you could have uh, tape around around it just to help keep the sock in, in shape, etc. One thing I didn't mention when I was talking about humans versus zombies overall is FPS. Your blaster shoots a dart at a feet per second. So your dart will shoot at a feet per second amount. If you're operating a normal Hasbro Nerf blaster, they're, they're barely going above 40, 50 FPS. You'll be lucky enough if it hits the standard 60 to 70. So it's, it's relatively safe. But most colleges will allow up to 100 FPS, maybe 110, depending on the college. Enmor has done 130 FPS. And that is still the case. No five-shot sh no five average shell exceed 120 FPS. So if you're you know, shooting five at once, it can't go above 120. But at these higher FPS caps, protection safety glasses is a must. So just keep that in mind. Other than that, you know, if you're going to paint your blaster, don't paint it look like a real a particular weapon you don't want that to happen just keep it colorful and make sure that the barrel is orange pretty straightforward same thing with tack gear you know it's it's cool to be tactical cool but don't go out of the way to make sure you're very intimidating that's what discourages the game other than that attachments you don't want flashlights etc we're not really that's the other thing normally any invitations don't do night missions it's rare if they ever do so, and more is no exception. There's no night mission, so there's no need for flashlights. Flashlight attachments, anyways. I will give one hint. Mission one, there is no electronic blasters. So you have to use spring power blasters or throwing socks or whatever the case may be within the rules and limits of and more 2024. Now, let's talk about specials for and more because I have some concern. But let's go with the good, because the good I do like. Original zombies. As I stated before, original zombies can be hidden, they can be not hidden, they can be revealed automatically. It's not a big deal. They don't have any special identification typically, it's just a normal zombie. But N Wars OZs have this in play. They will start Mission 1 as zombies with the following mechanics. Each OZ will be given a deck of four cards painted on one side to be red, blue, yellow, and black. Upon tagging a human, instead of that human becoming a zombie immediately, the OZ will offer a tag player their deck of cards. The human player will select a card and keep and look at the color. The color of their card determines their turn time. This is cool because in the past... With Penn State, I never experienced it, but I've heard of it. That if you got tagged at Penn State, you had incubation time. Which means, depending on the respawn time that was in play when you got tagged, is your time frame of in incubation. So, let's say the time, the, the, the tag time was 60 seconds for respawn. Okay, I got tagged. So that means I have 60 seconds before I turn into a zombie. Which gave the human player who got turned as like a last stand kind of thing. Tell the other human players to run or get to the objective or get to safety. Whichever the case may be. 
and unload all of their darts or throwing socks at the horde. That was cool. But I also like this just as much, maybe a little more. Because the turn timetable, black card, instant turn. That sucks. Yellow card, basically one hour, one hour after mission one. So that's fair. Red card uh, will be during downtime to missions one and two. Okay, so even longer. And then the blue card, pretty much after the end after the end of mission two is when you turn so that's a pretty long time frame that's a few hours so you pretty much could be playing a third of end war got tagged by original zombie don't get tagged by any other zombies and you get to play a third of the game as a human player before you become a zombie that's pretty cool honestly i i do like how the oz card time OZ cards just work in them. Although, should a card be selected after the indicated turn time, then the card is seen as an instant turn. For example, it is this time and a yellow card is do is dawn drawn. If you put human player is tagged and they have already had a card, that human player instantly turns to a zombie and the OZ should not give that and should not give that player a new card. Turn back into a human player, the OZ needs to hand out three of their four cards. If the player wishes to remain a zombie, they would have the they would hand out three cards and use the fourth uh, on themselves. Once the OZ has obtained their three tags, they they may begin their play as a human at the start of the next mission. Or oh! Interesting. So there's a duality. So human, you have a bit of a time time period to turn and the zombies have the ability to turn back into humans i didn't read all this this is choice now we covered good let's go for the bad in my opinion as i said i'm comfortable with specials special zombies special zombies are fun to to have in a game it, it definitely makes the game more interesting however you do want to keep the specials simple as possible you don't want to overcomplicate them boomers are a staple it just depends where you play them if you're on the east coast boomers are typically handled with a cone they drop the cone they say boom and it acts as a respawn point for zombies zombies just go around the cone or around the the, the boomer to well, quote unquote respawn if you go outside the east coast boomers have a staff they drop the staff boom and they spin it in a counterclockwise direction. The zombies have to run in that same direction to respawn. So, it generally works the same. It's just a slight deviation, which is fine. I don't have a problem with that. Guardians, in this case, are shield zombies, as far as I understood it. It's a 5x3 cardboard tower shield that they will carry around. Which will be you know, able to protect themselves, which is fine. Smokers, aka spitters, aka a zombie that has an object they can throw. If it touches you, it lands on the ground, it's still an active object, so if you bump into it, you turn into a zombie. Pretty straightforward. Uh, a thrown ball may ricochet off one player to another, both players would be considered tagged. If a smoker ball hits a blaster, it is still alive. If the ball only hits a player's blaster and not the player themselves, it does not count as a tag. Humans may not swing around or extend their blasters out of close proximity to their body to deflect the, the bat the bat down or bat down the smoke or ball. Humans may move their blasters around within close proximity to their body in order to protect themselves from an incoming smoke ball. The smoker is responsible for their ball. Older zombies and humans should not touch it. I assume if a zombie touches it, they're just, they're just stunned. So, smoker ball may not be thrown over the road. Blah, blah. Yeah. You know. Play within the rules, obviously. Don't don't break the rules. Now. Massive issue is the tanks. Okay? Tanks are simple. Most tanks I've seen are usually wearing a pink, orange, red kind of shirt. Still on their normal headband. Identified as tank. Tanks are taken out with thrown socks. Okay, that's that's pretty straightforward. 
and more 2024 on the other hand has three types of tanks Technically a fourth one but we'll get to the fourth one in a moment they got very high you know brightly colored safety vests and tanks that are identified yellow are stunned by socks tanks that are in a blue have to be stunned by mega xl darts tanks in pink can only be stunned by demolisher missiles I don't know how common it is for people to run around with Mega XL or Demolisher Missiles. Maybe there is more of a population for those ammo types. But a sock is a sock. Socks are plentiful. This just overcomplicates a special that doesn't need to be overcomplicated. Also, what if you're colorblind? I'm just, I'm just pointing out things that could go wrong. So, yeah. Now, another special, Dunce Cap Zombies. They are pretty much like a tank, but they can only get stunned by specified ammo. A stuffed animal. Okay. I assume Dunce Cap Zombies are not going to be plentiful. Tanks are usually are. So I have more I have more beef with the different colored tanks than I do for a dunce cap zombie. But I don't like Okay. Now different zombie. So Dunce Cap is interesting. I just hope it's very limited. Make it just one tank. Leave it at that. There are things called zombie leaders. Yeah, I assume these are very limited, too. Uh, but there's one in particular I don't like the idea of. They can spray their Silly String. Any pieces of Silly String that lands on an active human player and sticks will count as a tag. Why are we introducing Silly String? It's not necessary. I'm fine if you had a Pool Noodle. Pool Noodle with a Lank. That's totally fine. But if we're going to incorporate... Silly string that you know if it sticks to you, you turn into a zombie. It's a hot day. No, I get it's only one person, probably, but still. The other ones I don't seem to have issues with. The other leaders have a shield, one is an address. Oh no, they respawn a set X minute timer rather than the rolling respawns. They can do a hand holding chain with a number of with a, any number of stunned zombies and sing a song. At the completion of the song, all zombies except for the leader are active. After the completion of the song, the leader is stunned for two X minutes. Okay. So there, there's my beef with the leaders. Now, the other mechanic that I'm a little perplexed on and may not be as bad as I think it is, is called bushwhacking. Bushwhacking, as far as I understand it, you're essentially making a path, a specified path for humans to travel. Unless you're in an open area, this should not matter, apparently. But, if you're not in an open area, bit of a pain because this whole mechanic has literally nine points like nine descriptors and then in the descriptor has sections and then those sections have sections to it so it's a f it's an interesting idea but to have it in a 500 to a thousand player kind of game I don't recommend it so I believe that's everything that I have concern about for end of 2024 don't get me wrong end has been a fantastic event for the most part not every year year has been a home run hit I understand that but just looking at that handbook this year I have a little concern just a little bit and any goodwill that happened last year to be turned this year 
it's not a good sign either. So, I know this is a long video, potentially. I'm going to scale this down and edit it down on certain things. So if I jump cut or something weird happens, it's going to happen. And I have footage that I could use over my voice for active play, things I filmed years ago, although depending on how it's filmed and who was in it, will depend if I actually use it. So, yeah, so a month from now, I'm going to end more. After that, there'll be a Midsummer game that's going to happen at the end of July, and I look forward to going back to the fall games in the colleges in the New York area. So, that's Humans vs. Zombies, and that's End War of 2024. I'll see you guys in about a month or so, and we'll talk about my experience of End War 2024. I hope it's better than 2022, and it does not get worse than 2022. That handbook, like I said, gives me some concerns, but we'll cross that road when we get there. So, that's it for me, guys. This is Tom Trusty. You're going to sign up for now. Check out my videos. I have videos you can go check out that are not Humans vs. Zombies. Although, Seven Days to Die is a crafting survival horror game, or zombie game at least. If you're not into that, I have Gunstar Superheroes. I just did that recently. If you're not in either of those, I have Monstrum. I did a bit of a Monstrum playthrough a while ago. If these don't fancy you at all, here, watch a live stream I did probably last Saturday or Sunday or weeks ago. So, options to view. But that's it for me, guys, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.